Hi there, my name is Dale and welcome to my channel. Well, the topic of today is an animation. Well, not just any animation, I'll be teaching you how to do rotoscope animation. Now, before we get started into it, I just wanted to tell you that the theme I've chose for, the, uh, for this video will be sports related. Technically, we'll be animating a little bit of parkour, mainly one vault, a speed vault, basically, right? But uh, overall, let's get into it. Now, before we get into the video, I just wanted to mention that the video is very long, so I cannot uh, play that in real time. So to be fast forwarded uh, to fit, uh, you know, <laughs> the time. But yeah, if you want the full video without it being time lapsed, uh, there'll be a description to the Google Drive below on the YouTube channel. But yeah, let's get into it. Now, what I'm going to teach you today is rotoscoping. Now, what is rotoscoping? Rotoscoping is an animation technique that animators use to trace over motion pictures or motion footage, depending on what you want to choose, but yeah, frame by frame to produce realistic action. Originally, animators projected photographs or uh, live action movie images onto glass panels and traced over the image. So based from that information, rotoscoping is just you tracing over a footage. Well, I, I wouldn't want to use tracing because some people have, tends to give a negative term towards tracing. But overall, rotoscoping makes your process easier, to in, the animation process easier. Why is that? It allows us to produce more content faster than, you know, doing traditionally of trying to figure out if the frame looks good or not. But now, that's the thing. There's multiple ways we can do rotoscoping. Hence, let's go into the project. So, one thing I wanted to explain how I use rotoscoping, right? We don't really necessarily need to use footage or act it out or, you know, real life footage or anything. What you can possibly do is simple one, you can resort to 3D animation or footage, depending if you want to do it. But usually, 2D animation is what I would like, I, I most likely would use. So, but how I did this animation was me having i ended up going to like free site mix them up and i got some couple of votes from there once i got a, a vote a speed vote or animation i like exported it towards an, a, a 3d animation software uh, which i used in this case was iClone but you don't really have to necessarily use that you can use a free open source uh, uh, software like blender for your animation then just make your camera face the way or the direction you need it to face isn't right then export the animation out isn't right so after exporting the, the animation out as a movie or anything as i said you don't really have to do 3d but i in this case i used 3d so i'll be sticking to that specifically now how is rotoscoping useful in our case well being hot rotoscope as i've said <laughs> that allows us to move faster and quicker than we could before but that's not only the case isn't right we could we are able to produce much better quality of anime or in this case i'm just saying anime but animation in the long run than uh, us struggling frame by frame so um, examples uh an anime that used rotoscoping perfectly was god of high school most of you didn't notice because there's a specific method they did a method i'll show you how i did within this tutorial now let's get into it now the software I'm going to be using in this video is Clip Studio. I've always been using it and I find it as a trusted companion. But overall, with Clip Studio, it allows me to play movie tracks. Of course, other software can probably do that, but with Clip Studio, it's much more visible. So now you could easily click, you know, import movie, then import the footage you have exported from the 3D model or record the video with your phone. So after doing that, you could easily import it into clip studio now after putting it into clip studio it opens the timeline then you can open a new to open a new folder structure and then you could easily start animating now the good thing about rotoscoping is that you could have everything predetermined before you started animating what do i mean predetermined for example frame rate isn't it right you could easily have the proper animation the way you like it in a 3d animation or footage then what you do is when you export it or for example in this case i'll be using a 3d uh, software for it so what i did I exported my 3d animation or footage isn't it right my 3d footage i exported it at 12 frames per second since that's the proper frame rate you should be using for animation 
also white of frames per second. Mainly because if you've noticed here, yeah, 3D animations is too realistic. Isn't right? The extra motion, the extra weight on each footsteps and all the stuff causes well problems. It makes it look like it's 3D. Hence exporting the footage or the 3D animation in top frames allows us to get the right <laughs> the right animation we need yes it may look a bit choppy for 3d yes but once you rotoscope or use it to animate it it will move even faster but now if you use using video footages you could easily just open your video editing software and export it at 12 frames then you could you would get 12 frames of footage then you have your rotoscope footage so now that's one of the points of using rotoscope that can be that can be very useful two you can also determine if the scene is slow motion, if it's uh, quick, fast, or any type of scene you decide to do, like the perfect camera angle, but the perfect, uh, uh, yeah, perfect camera angle, the perfect shot, the perfect, you know, uh, uh, fighting scene or anything. But in this case, as I said, I'll be doing a spot scene, a parkour scene on the screen. That can be predetermined in the uh, party software or the way you shoot it in isn't it right the once it's in the right motion the right movement the right angle you like it you could easily use that as a base reference you know it's like the first stage of sketching isn't it right you sketch out you know like of, of animating you sketch out the animation first to see the uh, the right movement to figure out the movement of like if it's going to look good if it if, if it turns out the way it's what you want it to be which is a whole lot of process it takes time isn't it right because now if you're not satisfied with something you have to go back and rework it rework it rework it rework it until you have the the first and clean base animation that you are satisfied with as i say it takes a lot of time so now doing 3d or, or or video allows us to move that to skip that step and move even faster and just get into not light work but into character putting the character within the scene so that's uh, one of the benefits of rotoscoping, as I, as I said. So doing rotoscoping is really good in animation, especially if you want to produce an episode or something even quicker. This can help you in many ways. So doing rotoscoping is a very useful way of animating. As I said, especially if you're doing 3D, because that, as, I, as I've said, like God of High School, it allowed them to focus more on detail and color than on the main base isn't it right since they have worked only on the animations with two stuntmen and stuff the fight scenes and all the stuff then they just reworked on top of that just used as the base it does not have to take a lot of time at all and yeah now this leads us to the, to the end of the video i hope you like the video if so please subscribe so if you're interested in any tutorials on clip studio i have one here next to me the card is it a card oh yeah it's a card yeah <laughs> the card next to me uh showing a tutorial on how to color or self shade isn't it right in clip studio and yeah besides that i have more tutorials in, in my channel if you subscribe i will release more and on but yeah overall i hope you enjoyed the, the video and uh yeah it's there right now and i'm out i'll check you out